the purpose of this video is to show accounting students how to balance an account using a formal process in the general ledger. There are three steps to balancing an account. The first thing that we have to do is we have to total the amounts on each side and then write the larger of these on both sides. Second thing we have to do is calculate the balance. Deduct the smaller side from the total. The last thing we do is we enter the balance as a ledger entry and that means that it has a matching debit and credit. Balancing is important because this entry then carries forward the balance that means that whatever the account ends the reporting period in, that will be the opening balance for the next period. So what do these steps look like? We can see here on this example of the general ledger for bank that we've got those three steps in play. So what the person has done here is they've totaled both sides of the bank account by adding them. So 12,500 plus 6,000 plus 3,400 on one side and then they've added 4,000 plus 9,000 plus 6,250. The larger of those sides is the amount that is written down here. It's important that the same amount is written on both sides. So we don't record this amount on the left and this amount on the right we choose the larger of the two amounts and we put it on both sides. So in this case, this side here is the larger and there we put it on both sides. So the next part that we do is we calculate the balance. So we know that one side equals 21,900. That's the larger side. Whereas the smaller side, if we just have a quick look at how much that equals, we can see that that's going to equal 19,250. So what step two is, if I think about this as step one, step two would be 21,900 minus 19,250. So working that out, we can see that the amount left over is 2,650. This is the balance that we're looking for in step two. Step three then says we enter the balance as a proper ledger entry with a matching debit and credit. Important to note where it goes. So it's important that when you do step one, you leave at least one line on either side. You'll notice that it says that amount, 2,650, goes above the total on the smaller side, like that, and below the total on the larger side. This is because it's telling us that for the start of the next period, there is $2,650 still left in our bank account. The last thing that you should be looking at is the dates. This date here is the end of the period. This date here is the start of the next period. Be really careful with these dates because you can be penalized for these in a SAC or exam if you write incorrect dates. So let's have a look at balancing an account using this example. So what we have here is a bank. So let's follow the steps. We're going to total up each side. So I've got my debit side and my credit side. My debit side equals, um, my debit side equals 1500 plus 2000 plus 120 plus 500 plus 230. So that gives me a total, if I add them up very quickly, 4,350. On the credit side, I'm going to add 900 
3,200, 700, and 900. That gives me a total of 5,700. So I can see that the credit side is larger. So I'm going to write the larger amount on both sides. Remember to leave a bit of room. So what's going to happen next? Basically, I need to get the smaller side to equal 5,700. So I need to work out how much to add to the smaller side. Now the smaller side is the debit. So to work that out, I'm going to take 5,700 and I'm going to minus 4,3,5,0. So I'm taking the larger side and I am minusing the smaller side away from it. So if I just put that into my calculator really quickly, I can see that I have left 1,3,5,0. So in order to make my sides balance, I need to add it above the total on the smaller side and I need to add it below the total on the larger side. I put in a balance and a balance and the last thing I put in is going to be my dates. So we can see here that this is for the month of June so my last day of my reporting period will be June 30 and my first day of the next reporting period will be July 1. And there we have a fully balanced account. This skill is really important because it can be worth marks in a SAC or exam. And these are really simple marks to get. And even if your transactions are incorrect in your account, as long as you show the process of balancing correctly, you'll still be awarded those marks.